Hi guys, welcome back. All right, today we have another video using a brand new release from Blue Knight Rubber Stamps. This one is called Bridge Over Waterfall. And this stamp is gonna be one of those classic stunning stamps because water is always so calming. This is such a uh, stamp that you can use in changing the seasons of it. So here I just used some very simple pan pastels, colored it in. Um, I didn't do a video on this because I think you guys can go back and watch my other videos, but I just used some pan pastels. I used some color pencils on the bridge, um, put some blues and purples in the sky, sprayed it with a fixative, mounted it on black and white cardstock, and there we go. Very simple. So you may or may not know that I am a winter baby. Leah and I, my daughter, who's going to be eight, um, we both have birthdays in January. So I was looking at this. The um, the backer card that came with the stamp has this beautiful winter scene. And I was like, that is really pretty. But how I want to do something is step it up a notch. So, of course, we're going to do a winter scene here. So the easiest way to do that... I'm going to show you right now is I have the stamp mounted in my Tim Holtz stamp positioning tool. It is on the rubber side. This is a piece of Nina solar white. I believe this is cut down to five and a quarter by four and I have the stamp already mounted. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp it with some VersaFine Claire in twilight, which is a deep, dark Navy blue. I am using my blue night rubber stamps, universal handle. These stamps are extremely detailed, so you really don't need to do a whole bunch to them. This is going to be very simple, but I think it's going to give us a nice classic winter look. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to pull the lid off and leave that stamp whoop, in its position. And then I'm going to bring my pan pastels in. Okay, the palette that I'm going to use is the day and night palette because I really just need a little bit of blue and a little bit of green out of here. Oh, I guess I could do some brown again, but again, I can use my color pencils on that. So, just trying to grab a little sponge tools here. All right, so I'm going to start with my trees. Just gonna go in with some green, just to give them some color. Don't worry about coloring over where it's stamped. We're gonna fix that in just a moment. Just wanna give them a hint of color so they're, you know that they are green. What I like about pan pastels is you don't have to be a perfect artist with coloring. You just lay down that color. And this is one of those really easy to do stamps like that. Of course, if you wanted to be more precise, you could color over this with markers or color pencils. But anyone who knows who's been watching my channel for a while, I don't really do a lot of coloring. I like to make my cards quick, on the fly. Here you go. Here's what you get, right? All right, and then we want to bring in the light blue. Color in our little stream. I bet this is a fun little fishing stream in the springtime. Okay, got our blue. All right, and then for our bridge, I'm gonna bring in my little color pencils and do our bridge, but we're done with the pan pastels. And any color pencils will work. These are the chalk pencils. I like to use these when I'm using the pan pastels because it kind of matches in the shading and the dimension of it being chalk. 
but use what you have. If you have markers, use markers. If you have regular color pencils, use those. Your watercolors, use those. There's so many different mediums you can use with these stamps because the artist has drawn them to be easy to color. There's a lot of dimension in the way that they're drawn, and all you have to do is just color it in. That's it. And you can see I'm really not, you know, taking my time here and making this look perfectly perfect. Just laying down some color here. We're going to cover most of this up anyway. I'm just going to grab the other color brown here and fill it in so it looks more realistic. A couple different shades of brown. Again, don't worry about getting too far into the details here because we're going to make this a winter scene, so we're going to cover this up with snow. Now, if you really want it to be technical, you could go in with gray. I don't have a gray color pencil. And color in on your snow there. Just where, again, the artist has drawn some shadows where you would have dimension in that snow. A lot of it's not going to be seen, so I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Under the bridge there for some shadowing. Under the tree here. Okay, I'm done. Let me just inspect that. Anything that I don't like or anything that sticks out. I'm going to just take my eraser and erase it and clean it up a little bit. All right, that looks okay to me. Now, I'm gonna bring my stamp in, and I'm going to stamp over that because the pan pastels are pretty opaque, so they do kind of cover over our stamped images. I'm gonna use the same color, VersaFine Claire, again, using my handle so that I don't drop my ink pad. And since I never used my, moved my paper, this should line up perfectly. And it's just gonna really make our image pop. All right, perfect. So now we have all the detail back. And I want to give that a second to dry because um, Versamark inks, Versafine inks, sorry, are pigment inks. So they do take a minute to dry, but they're totally worth how vibrant they are. I can take this, attach it back to the backer sheet. That can go back in my drawer, very easy to store. I'm going to take the heat tool to this. Use my little spatula and lift it up. Fine detail eraser and just kind of clean up some spots that I see. Just a little bit of over coloring. All right good to go. All right, so the next part is the part that's the fun part. This is what's going to make it pop. Now, you guys have seen the method where I have um, cut this down, cut it down with double-sided tape, put double-sided tape on there, and then put glitter on it. Well, today's method is similar, but a little bit more instant gratification. We are going to use sparkle embossing powder from Hero Arts. So I'm going to grab a 
scrap piece of paper. Now, I am going to cut my panel down to let's see what size do we have here. It's already at five and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit more. We're gonna go to five by three and three quarters, I think. So just a little smidgen here off each side. And again, you wanna be careful with your ink. Make sure it is dry because those are pigment inks. And three, three quarters. We're gonna cut a little bit of the ground off. We're gonna leave the top alone. Okay, now I'm going to take my Versamark clear ink pad and I'm going to stamp all over this, okay? I don't want to smear it because at this point I'm not 100% sure that my ink is dry. In fact, it looks like I just transferred some ink. So again, you want to make sure that everything is dry before you do this. I'm just kind of stamping it and stamping it off here. That's not going to show up those little blips, so I'm not really not too worried about it. But we want the whole thing covered. Now, if I had used regular dye ink, you could just, you know, make sure it's dry and then smear it. But I don't want to do that. Okay, so we're good there. I'm going to move this out of the way. Bring in my little coffee filter. And again, using some Hero Arts embossing powder. We're going to sprinkle this on and this is called sparkle and it's a clear embossing powder with glitter involved so I prefer this method because it kind of locks in the glitter it's a little more transparent than the glitter that I was using the glitter that I was using was um, just very chunky and it, you kind of lost some of the image. So I can see this is fully covered. Dump my embossing powder back in the bucket. And if there's any spots we missed, we can go back in with the Versa marker and touch it up. All right, so now I'm gonna bring my heat tool. I'm gonna let my heat tool heat up a while before I go right to that. Okay, I think we did get most of it. Not all of it is in a spot there. Um, but you can see the difference as soon as that started to heat up. You want to make sure that's completely cool before you start touching it. But now we have that winter effect. We have the color in the trees. And like I said, you're not going to see the mistakes because the um, embossing powder hides them. But you can see that the, the bridge is brown, the snow is white, the water is blue, the trees are green. And by stamping it on navy, it just gave us more of that winter feel, but it has the snow on it, but we're not losing any of the um, translucent of the, of the embossing powder. We don't lose any of that dimension. 
So that looks really cool. And then you can just mount this on cardstock. Let's see here. I like the silver because that gives us more of a wintry look, but Ooh, I like the blue better. So we're going to do this blue foil card. I'm going to cut this down to five and a quarter by four. Let's see how wide is this? Nope, not going to go that way. We're going to have to go this way. for um, die cutting sentiments then. And of course, if you wanted it to pop up, you could put foam tape behind it. I like using the glue. Art glitter glue dries very quickly. It, it's a very strong hold on there. So I need to very quickly decide where I want this. Make sure it's pretty centered. Put a heavy block on there. Let that dry a second. Get my card base out. And then we would glue that to that. Very nice winter card. It doesn't have to be a Christmas card or holiday card. It can just be a nice winter card. So again, the stamp set is called Bridge Over Waterfall. It doesn't have a sentiment, but if you move the stamps down a little bit, you could definitely put a sentiment inside there. Very easy to color, very easy to use. As you can see, this one I did with Pan Pastels. Very bright and cheerful by making the mountains kind of green instead of um, the snow scene, but in the snow scene, it is just as fun by adding that clear embossing powder with the glitter on there. Let me know down in the comments. As you guys know, I want to hear which one do you like better? Do you like the spring scene or do you like the winter scene? So we have the winter snow scene over here. We have the spring scene over here. Definitely would like to see you guys try these out. You can post your, um, Blue Night Rubber Stamps images on Facebook. Fans of Blue Night Rubber Stamps would like to see what you guys do with the stamp sets. Um, if you have any questions, post them down below. I will link everything that I've used down in the description for you. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. and Click the bell in the bottom right-hand corner. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.